بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والسيد المرسلين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان the month of القرآن day 24 حديث of the day عن أبي هريرة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قرأ عشر آيات في ليلة لم يكتب من الغافلين رواه الإمام البيهقي في شعب الإيمان أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه said that the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever recites ten ayat in the night will never be recorded among the heedless. Daily recitation of the Qur'an helps rejuvenate the soul. The Qur'an was revealed to guide people to prosperity and good life in both worlds. The Qur'an is the word of Allah. Reciting the Qur'an is in essence having a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we stop reading the Qur'an, we become heedless and neglectful of the gems of wisdom found in the Qur'an. Not to speak of becoming unmindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith confirms, if you read 10 ayat every day, you will not be recorded among the heedless. So let us not desert the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will cry out on the day of judgment and say with deep sorrow, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا O oh my Lord, my people have forsaken this Qur'an. Surah Al-Furqan, Surah number 25, Ayah number 30. Reciting 10 ayat does not take much time. Let us set aside at least five minutes every day and read at least 10 ayat with comprehension. With comprehension. We will, inshallah, be recorded among the God-conscious believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Qur'an the spring of our hearts the spring that quenches the thirst of our souls. Ameen. The Quranic concept of virtue, part three. ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين إلى قوله وأقام الصلاة Virtue, righteousness, is not only that you turn your faces in prayer towards the east or the west, but true virtue, true piety, is for one to believe in Allah and the last day, the angels, the scripture, and the prophets of God. And until Allah said, and establishes regular prayer and pay the prescribed zakah. Among the basic rights of Allah, huququllah, are salah and zakah. The focus in part two was on salah, in part three, zakah, the obligatory charity, will be discussed. We need to draw a distinction between what we call charity, sadaqah, and zakah, which is the third pillar of Islam, and is just as important as salah. There are dozens of ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala associates zakah with salah. Both salah and zakah have to do with purification. While salah purifies one's soul, 
zakah purifies one's wealth. Further, those who observe their prayers and pay their zakah regularly also have firm belief in the hereafter. This notion is expressed in numerous ayat of the Qur'an, such as, for example, in this ayah al-mubarakah, Taseen tilka ayat al-Qur'an wa kitabun mubin hudan wa bushra lil mu'mineen alladhina yuqimun as-salata wa yu'tun az-zakata wa hum bil-akhirati hum yuqinun. Taseen, these are the ayat, revelations of the Qur'an and a clear book. It is guidance and good news for the believers. Those who establish salah and pay zakah and are certain about the life to come. Al-Akhirah, Surah Al-Naml, Surah number 27, Ayat 1 to 3. The same idea resonates in the first few ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون وبالآخرة هم يوقنون This is the book in which there is no doubt a guide for the righteous those who believe in the unseen keep up the prayer and give out of what we have provided for them. And those who believe in what was sent down to you and what was sent down before you and those who have firm faith in the hereafter. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat 2 to 4. Hence, being cognizant of accountability before the Lord in the life to come, True believers are very conscious about guarding their salah and paying their zakah. The term zakah is derived from the Arabic root meaning to increase zakah. Zay kaf ya. To, to purify and to bless and can be defined as a specific portion of one's wealth which is designated by way of obligatory charity for certain categories of people and for certain purposes. Zakah must be paid by every Muslim who has nisab, the zakat bracket, which is usually, which is usually three ounces of gold or the equivalent amount of money thereof. It is conditioned by the following Number one, zakah, which is two and a half percent of one's accumulated savings, should be paid on the amount remaining after meeting the expenses of necessities such as food, clothing, housing, vehicles, etc. Zakah is calculated only after a complete year of the Islamic calendar, the lunar calendar, has passed over the amount on which zakah is payable. Zakah is not only on cash, but also on crops, farms, fruits, livestock, merchandise, and minerals. Zakah is also on precious metals like gold and silver, maybe in the forms of coins, jewelry, bullions, ingots, or dust. All forms of liquid assets attract zakah, as long as they constitute the nisab, a period of a year has passed over them, debts have been settled, and basic needs have been met. Who are the recipients of zakah? إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا والمؤلفة قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين وفي وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم سورة التوبة الله سبحانه وتعالى clearly describes to us the eight categories of the recipients of zakah zakah is for according to the ayah the poor 
the destitute, those who collect it, reconciling people's hearts, freeing slaves, those in debt, spending in the way of Allah and travelers. It is a legal obligation from Allah. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Surah At-Tawbah, Surah number 9, Ayah number 60. The first and second categories constitute the poor and the destitute. They are, they are those who don't have enough means or income to support themselves and their families. They are eligible for receiving zakah. Any person who has enough means to survive is not eligible. In a hadith reported by Imam Ahmad, Imam Abu Dawood, and Imam Nasa'i, two men came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked for zakah. He looked at them closely and found them strong and able. He said, if you want, I will give you. But you should know that the wealthy or unable person who can work has no share in zakah. The third category is of those individuals who administer the institution of zakah. This may include assigning people for collecting zakat funds, bookkeeping, making lists of people qualifying for zakah, and so on. People engaged in such activities will receive their wages from the zakat fund, even if they are wealthy. The fourth category is mainly comprised of those individuals who are new converts to Islam, al-mu'allafati qulubuhum. We have to make sure that we support them and strengthen them financially, lest they leave Islam. It is an obligation on the Muslim community to take care of such people. The fifth category is the freeing of slaves and of the Muslim prisoners of war whose freedom is tied to monetary payment, which would secure their release. This category also includes individuals who may accidentally kill someone and have no means to pay off the blood money, the dia. They should be helped from the zakat fund. The sixth category is of those individuals who have incurred debt and have no money to pay the debts. The seventh category toward which zakat money is to be dispersed is in the, is in the path of Allah or fi sabilillah. The ulama generally accept this to mean spending in the preparation of war in the path of Allah, not for any other war such as those made for imperialistic designs or for other motives. Zakah under this category is utilized to buy arms and supplies, pay salaries to soldiers, and meet all other expenditure needed for the operation. As such, situations are not quite prevalent in contemporary times. The scholars of our time allow the allocation of zakat money under this category to be expended and spent toward mosques, learning centers, publications, and distribution of Qur'an and other Islamic literature, and so on. Such activities help preserve our deen and are effective tools for da'wah. According to our scholars, this fatwa is applicable to Muslims living in the West or non-Muslim countries. The eighth and final category is of the traveler, irrespective of his social or monetary status. A traveler who is in another country or land and runs out of money. He or she deserves money out of zakah that will help him go back to his country. 
paying zakah in advance. It is permissible for zakah to be paid in advance because the poor and the needy are there all the time, not only in the month of Ramadan, the time when Muslims usually take out their zakah. The ulama, the scholars, are of the opinion that zakah can be paid in advance, but a track of the payment should be maintained in order to pay the balance of any shortfall in payment before the due date. If payment has been made in excess, then it is always good to give more for Allah's sake. Now here are some common misconceptions about zakah. The tax we pay is considered by some Muslims as zakah. This is wrong. Any tax levied by any government or authority is in no way to be construed as part of zakah, which is a mode of worship and one of the pillars of Islam. Some people consider zakat al-fitr to be a part of zakat al-mal. There are two separate entities that have to be dealt with separately. A complete Islamic calendar year cycle or hawl and not the Gregorian calendar is the basis of calculation of zakat. A good way is to designate the last day of Ramadan, for example, as the end of one's hawl. Some people defer paying their zakat without any valid reason. This practice is incorrect and should be avoided. To give a loan to someone out of money allocated for zakat is wrong. To consider spending on those whom a person is obliged to spend on, such as one's parents, children, wife, grandparents, as zakah is wrong. We are responsible to spend on them and they are not eligible for zakah. Mosques and masajid should be preferably supported with non-zakat funds. Those scholars do agree that supporting Islamic centers and mosques with zakat money in non-Muslim and Western countries is permitted. It is not only cash that should be taken into account while calculating one's net worth for the payment of zakat. Rather, all assets have to be taken into account. Wages to workers cannot be paid out of zakat. Zakat is not payable on precious stones, diamonds, and pearls unless they are used for trade. There is a disagreement, however, among fuqaha jurists and scholars whether women's gold and silver jewelry are subject to zakat or not. Imams Abu Hanifa and Ibn Hazm hold that they are. They base their opinion on the hadith that says, two women wearing gold bracelets came into the presence of the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet asked them, would you prefer that Allah should give you bracelets of fire to wear on the day of Qiyamah? They replied, no, O blessed, O blessed Prophet wasallam. The Prophet then said, so give what is your duty on what you have in your hands. Now as for Imams Malik, Ash-Shafi'i and Ahmad, there is no zakah on women's jewelry regardless of its value. Sheikh Al-Qaradawi, Hafizahullah, holds an opinion between the two extremes. For him, the jewelry women adorn themselves with on a regular or occasional basis is exempt from zakah. But the jewelry kept in safe or what is over and above what they normally wear are zakatable. Payment of zakah is an obligation upon Muslims. We should never be like those about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
والذين يكنزون الذهب والفضة ولا ينفقونها في سبيل الله فبشرهم بعذاب أليم As for those who hoard up gold and silver and do not spend it in the way of Allah give them the news of a painful punishment يوم يحمى عليها في نار جهنم فتقوى بها جباههم وجنوبهم وظهورهم هذا ما كنستم لأنفسكم فذوقوا ما كنتم تكنزون On the day when their gold and silver is heated up in the fire of hell and their foreheads, sides and backs are branded with it it will be said to them this is what you hoarded for yourselves so taste what you were hoarding وَلَيَعْذُ بِاللَّهِ May God forbid Surah Tawbah, Surah number 9, Ayat 34 and 35. We should be honest and accurate in our calculation of zakat and give it on a timely manner to deserving recipients out of love of and obedience to Allah Almighty. He keeps count of everything. May we be counted among those righteous and virtuous believers. Ayatul Bir mentions, Ameen. Barak Allahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimina wa al-Muslimat. Fastaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-Ghafoor al-Rahim. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته